I just fell in love with the preserves. I just enjoyed seeing undisturbed, you know, uh, nature and a sense of, um, you know, just being grateful for the beauty of creation. And I really appreciated that the city had set aside so much open land. But Phoenix turned out to be kind of a, a tough town for me for a while. headlines often and it really put a lot of fear into into people into the community there were environmental groups that were doing this this, this sort of things certainly I think the arson has played up on that and, and try to get us to believe that was the motive the media's role in this is that they speculated this is probably an eco-terrorist, and that's what everybody jumped on. For a while there, we thought maybe, you know, it certainly was a possibility, but the more we learned, the more we felt that wasn't an environmental motive at all. Can you sit? You're such a good girl. You ready to go hiking? It's been a long time, isn't it? It's been too long. Let's go. Americans are great at having facades. You know, you, and, and whether it's in the workplace or in church, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. And often it's a lie. I think I was unhappy with some things going on in my life. Part of it was, um, you know, I was laid off from a position, and that, there was some depression associated with that. And I developed a porn addiction. Porn it can be very insidious. When you have an addiction, whether it's meth or opiates or a sexual addiction, just a little bit more, you get a singular focus on that and it, it clouds your judgment. And looking back, I, I think I recognize now that that porn addiction was a, a, a major factor along with the depression and the moral compass getting turned off. Uh. But there was a compulsion to kind of act out it was a control thing, you bet. Come on, Gracie. And you're looking to find your niche, you know, to make a statement. What a gorgeous day. I bought this piece of property back in 1998 near the Phoenix Mountain Preserve area. It's kind of a nice place because it makes you feel like you're in the desert, but you're sort of in the middle of Phoenix. This was a vacant lot and wanted to build a home that I would eventually retire in. I asked a contractor friend of mine to find some land along the preserve so I could just come out my backyard and, and hit the trails. A real ugly house that was so out of place, it morphed into a, to a campaign. And in 2000, it actually burned down, unfortunately. The first one was probably a combination of he didn't like where the home was in relation to his home or the relation to his hiking trail. When the guy basically said, no one's gonna tell me what I can do with my own property. I'm gonna take the necessary precautions and I'm gonna rebuild the same house. Then it became personal. I was the first and second uh, house to have burned down. You know, after the second fire at that first location, and that, that was all the original intent was, there was a report that speculated it was a case of eco-terrorism. And the rest is history, as they say. And then there was a third fire, and then there was a fourth fire. Why did I use fire to act out? There was a story to tell, and nothing got the media's attention like a fire. classic excitement-based criminal activity. And then as soon as there was some media attention, he jumped on that and kept it going. What better way to feed an excitement-based criminal than to be on the news every day? And then it kind of took on a life of its own and I would start leaving notes 
things like, if you build it, we will burn it, that type of statement or slogan. Taunting the authorities, not a healthy thing to do. And, and it was one of the reasons I ended up with an 18 year prison sentence, undoubtedly. all these visions of what might happen to you while you're incarcerated and six eight months into detention as I was reading the Bible on a daily basis my faith was coming alive as never before and I got a sense of God the Spirit speaking to me Mark you're gonna get through this now he allows consequences he allowed a big one to happen in my life but he prepared me for what I see and do today Morning, guys. Anybody hungry? Chaplain Mark is back. Well, here, here's something that you get for yourself later. How are you doing otherwise? Good, 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 really good. What can we pray for? Father, we just ask your blessing on this family. And I thank you for the continued healing in Blue. Uh, Blue is part of your creation, as little Buddy is and Sandy is. And I'm grateful that she's got good companionship. We thank you, Jesus, that you want better for them. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay. Nice beer, huh? They may be hungry for food, but more so they're probably hungry just for a human connection. If you put the, the fires aside, we found this evidence still of a double life, of, of things that were different than how his friends and circle perceived him. Socks? Yeah, I need socks. Please. People always need socks. And hopefully he was able to, to get that figured out in the time that he served and um, put that other part of him to rest. I don't live in the past, but I am informed by my past. I'm informed by my prison experience and I'm informed by the transforming power of God in my life. So, you're losing consciousness. You want to sit down? No, I'm losing consciousness. Come on, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna walk together. And the opportunities that we have, whatever path you take, to start fresh and have a new beginning. All right, you guys keep an eye on him until he, until he settles down. I was an inmate for years, and I know about stigmas, and that's part of the reason I'm out here with you now. So I know what it's like going from down and out to serving the Lord, you understand. Can I give you a hug? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. You take care. Uh, Pastor Mark. Yes. Gotcha. I won't forget you. Mark, and where are you at? Um, wherever God sends me. But this definitely ranks up in, in one of those highlights of, of investigations or things that I've been able to be involved with in my career. So I was always going to build the house, and I guess as they say in this case, the third time really is a charm. Why did you come back to Arizona? You said you considered other options. I. Uh, at some level, I had unfinished business. 